Hello everybody and welcome back to another Minecraft myth busting video. Today is our fourth episode of Mini Myths where we take five smaller questions about the game and we cover them all in one episode. So as always if you have a question you want answered then leave a comment down below and I'll add it to my list. I've also noticed that Mini Myths is very popular with you the viewers so if you would like to see these Mini Myth episodes more frequently then let me know by leaving a like or a comment on this video. But that is enough talking for now it's time to get to the myths. Our first myth is one I have heard many people ask time and time again. Does horse armour slow down a horse? I'm going to guess no, but it's easy to understand where this myth comes from, as in reality heavy horse armour would slow down a horse. So this is going to be really easy to test. If we use our horse speedometer we can time four horses that have the exact same speed. One will be without armour and three with the different types available. We can then compare the speeds side by side. And as you can clearly see, the horses are not slowed down when the armour is equipped. This next one involves Guardians and TNT. The Guardians have a Fawns effect when their spikes are extended. If the player attacks it, they take damage because of this. But what's interesting is when damaged by TNT, the Guardian doesn't damage the player with its Fawns effect. This is both when the Guardian dies and when it survives the explosion. This is something that Psyguy Ryan found when digging around in the code. Guardians do not use their fawns attack if the damage is from an explosion. So what does this mean? If in an ocean monument full of water, TNT can be used as a weapon as it won't destroy the blocks and the player won't be damaged by the guardians. Our third question is to do with the big trees you can grow with four spruce or jungle saplings. You wanted to know if they drop a higher yield of saplings compared to normal trees. This is useful information to note if you're trying to gather a lot of saplings for a tree farm or for something else. And at first thought I thought this is going to be pretty tough to test. I pictured myself planting and chopping down lots of trees in our testing facility. But then I realised all we need to do is grow the trees. Then we can use MCEdit to analyse the amount of wood and lead blocks each tree type generates. From that we can extrapolate the answer we are looking for. So here is the raw data. To make sense of this we first calculate how much wood and leaves each tree has on average. We then divide that number by 4 for the large trees so we can calculate the materials generated per sapling used. Next we calculate the average saplings the leaf blocks will drop for each tree type. For spruce this is 5% and for jungle it's 2.5. This gives us the average saplings dropped by each tree type. We can then deduct the saplings used to grow the tree and we find out how many saplings we yield per tree type. From this I'd say you'd probably be better off using small trees to farm saplings. Even though the bigger ones yield more they also produce 10 times the amount of wood which takes a lot of time to chop down and makes them slower to farm. So the answer to the question is yes the bigger trees yield more saplings but that does not make them practical for farming them. For our fourth myth of this video Saigai Ryan has found some very useful information on spider spawning. If you have ever wanted to know the odds of a spider spawning with potion effects then we have the answers for you. This only works on hard difficulty. In normal and easy spiders don't spawn with potion effects but in hard mode there's a 1 in 100 chance that a spider will spawn with a potion effect. And there are four different effects it can have. Speed, strength, regeneration and invisibility. It can only ever have one of these effects and speed has a 2 in 5 chance of being selected and the other three have just a 1 in 5 chance. And there is another factor that affects the chances of spiders having a potion effect, that is the mysterious local difficulty feature that appears in the F3 screen. The longer you spend in an area, the more this number goes up. You can see a good example of this when we move into an area where a lot of time has been spent testing. When this number is 1, there is a 1 in 100 chance, and as it goes up, that chance is increased. The exact numbers have not been calculated, but we can confirm as the local difficulty goes up, the chances of spiders spawning with potion effects does too. And the last myth for today is going to be a fun one. You wanted to know if withers can drown, and to find out, I have set up this water cube contained inside barrier blocks. From here, I spawned in a wither, and to my surprise, I learned they could break barrier blocks. A minute or so passed by, and in fear of my test world being damaged by rogue wither projectiles, I decided to end the experiment. The wither took no damage, which is a clear indication that they can't drown. And that wraps up this episode of Minecraft Myth Busting. As always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you next time. 